What's going on YouTube? It's your favorite micro grower, Dirtman Dan. So, welcome back to another episode of the mini grow, the micro no-till, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Welcome back. In true Dirtman fashion, let's get it going, like we always do. We got some of my favorite back around. Well, not back around, I actually, um, I have this bad habit of like leaving jars of bud in places that I normally don't go to and I found a jar that had some Chernobyl in the bottom of it so uh, yeah I got one of my favorites uh, back around or found again or whatever you want to say I don't know I found some fucking Chernobyl laying around it's old it's dry and I don't care because I still love this shit so, today we're going to be transplanting the Raphael uh, from the little cup into the bed, the no-till bed, but before we do, let's talk about, you know, where I've been, what I've been up to, you know, the typical Dirtman video rundown, right? So, um not soon after um, I made the last video uh, I went in and did one of my waterings and I noticed you know a couple little teeny white bugs just kind of hopping around I didn't really think nothing of it uh, kind of actually thought they were leaf hoppers um, you know which are a beneficial they eat uh, you know decaying plant matter <clears throat> so uh, fast forward a couple weeks, um, I start noticing some leaf damage on the cover crop. Nothing on the cannabis plant, but definitely noticing some leaf damage on like the the um, some of the clover and stuff like that. Okay, uh, something's definitely up here. So I start investigating, and lo and behold, man, I got thrips. Now, just to give you a little bit of background information, there's something like 6,000 different species of thrips. So, the ones I had are, um, they're white hopping thrips, um, which I mistaked for, uh, leaf hoppers, you know, which I mistaked for a beneficial, but they're not a beneficial. So, um... What I wound up doing is I ramped up the uh, the foliar on IPM uh, on my grow. So um, I have Dr. Zymes and I have Method One, and I went out and got some neem oil spray, and I've been rotating them like every other day. I'll do Dr. Zymes on a Monday. I'll do a neem oil on a Wednesday. I'll do a method one on a Friday. And I keep rolling it like that. You know, I'm not really letting up on these. And I hate to say it, man, but it's really been beating up the cover crop. Uh, you'll see it when we go over, uh, you know, spin you guys around to go transplant and whatnot. It really beat up the cover crop pretty bad. And I think I got to back off of it. I think I've been actually going a little too hard. Because even though I'm turning the lights all the way down and I'm doing it pretty much right before, uh, you know, the lights off, I'll turn the lights down, I'll foliar spray, and then I'll leave lights down until they go off probably like 20, 25 minutes later. But even still, I, I think I'm just foliar, foliar spraying my plants just too much and it's just really beating them up. Although... With that being said, the Raphael, dude, standing nice and tall, man. Well, okay, so um, that's something else I need to talk about, too. Right after I had shot the last video, uh, in true Ninja Turtles fashion, uh, Raphael decided to kick back and lay down, you know. Uh, if you guys, 
you know, watch uh, the Ninja Turtles, if you guys pay attention to the cartoon back in the day, Raphael was kind of lazy. You'd always catch him, you know, laying down, kind of waiting for Splinter to, to give him orders or something like that. He, he really wasn't like a go out and, uh, he wasn't like a go getter like, say, Leonardo was. But, uh, enough about the, an old cartoon. Um, true Raphael fashion, man. Um, RJ's Raphael decided to fucking lay down on the job. Um, it was probably a mixture between the fact that the lights in the uh, clone side are nowhere near as strong as the lights on the flower side. Um, so what I did is I actually turned down the lights on the flower side to about 50%. And then I, you know, I had moved the Raphael over. And by doing so, it made it made the the bottom stem grow really tall, and then the but the internodal spacing stayed very short, and um, the plant kind of just whoop, you know laid over on top of its own weight, being as though it's a seedling, it doesn't have a very thick stalk or anything, and um, I gotta get this relit. So. Being as though it doesn't have a thick stalk or anything like that, um, the little bit of leaf matter that it started to accumulate, it kind of fell over on its own weight. So I didn't tie it up or anything like that, but I did put a stake in there and I just kind of let it lean up against the stake. And um, that has been working and now it's finally starting to stand back up under its own weight. I did go in there and kind of manipulate the the stem a little bit kind of pop it a little bit try and get some um try and get it to throw some extra nutrients down into there you know stiffen itself up a little more because there's going to be a lot of training coming to this plant in the near future it's still little right now you know i still have it in its beginner cup um it's just beginning its fifth node so um you know, it's still small, and um, I noticed uh, the other day that the, the bottom leaves were starting to yellow, so it's definitely time to get them out of that little cup, get it into the no-till soil. Oh, dude, we got a, there's a bad storm right now. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I hope the power doesn't go out, but, um, so, yeah, perfect time for transplanting, man. It's bad and stormy out. Definitely not going outdoors, so why not do some garden work inside where it's not stormy? But, um, what else do I have to say? Uh, yeah, I think I've been overdoing it with the foliar feeding, not foliar feeding, but the foliar IPM. Uh, really been beating my cover crop up. The Raphael doesn't look too bad, it's very, very little leaf damage. So, I do believe that, um, I have it under control now because all of the new growth on the Raphael, since I noticed the problem, doesn't seem to have any leaf damage on it. So fingers crossed. I'm gonna I'm gonna back down on the sprays. You know, maybe I think I'm gonna keep the same interval, even though I kinda think the neem oil is really the one the culprit for beating these plants up. Um, I think I might back down on the intervals, like maybe I'll do two days in between three days in between, probably no more than three days in between. Like every third day, I think I might do a, another foliar. But, um, let's see. I don't know what else uh, to talk about other than, you know, it's kind of been a little slow up until now. The plant's really finally starting to like pick up some speed in terms of growth. So definitely time to get it out of the little pot into the, the no-till bed. And um, when I do transplant, the only thing I really like to use when transplanting is like just some endo, you know, mycorrhizae. Um, I have uh, some granular stuff that I got from Root Naturally online. It's great stuff, dude. It's great priced and they have tons of, you know, prop ghouls Propagules per gram. It's a hard one to say, but propagules per gram is how many little like endospores of that fungus are in there. 
So there's a ton of the fungus in there. There's not a whole lot of inert material. And that's what you're after, dude. You want something that's a really good bang for your buck if you're looking for specific things like that. So, as you can see, almost done with the joint. So, let's go over to the, uh, the flower chamber and get this Raphael out of its little tiny pot and into the flower bed. Alright guys, so here we are over at the flower tent. We'll get you all spun around and show you what we got going on. But this is what I was talking about. This is the granular myco endomycorrhizae from Root Naturally. Really good price. You can pick it up on Amazon. Shows up at your door and ready to rock and roll. But I got some of that. I got a little bottle of water that you can squeeze and squirt. And then um, just a little tiny like bonsai shovel. I just find these to be really easy to. I just find the <laughs> butterfingers. I just find those really easy to help make your like initial hole for when you're trying to dig down and transplant. But we'll get you all spun around and show you what we got going on here. All right, so we can get a little better shot of that stuff. Root naturally granular endomycorrhizae and like I said it's got a ton of good shit in there you don't need a whole lot of it I only use a quarter teaspoon for something that size which is basically the size of a solo cup but this is what we're looking at currently like I said cover crops kind of beat up right now you could see there's leaf damage all over the place but you know it is what it is it's still alive it's still gonna come back nice and strong I have no doubts in that the blue mat drippers over here doing her thing drippy drippy keeping everybody happy and then there's the Raphael like I said it kinda laid down for me on it for a little while that's why it's got that gangsta lean going on right now but we're gonna um, we're gonna put him a little further in the ground and maybe try and correct that today. So, let's get you guys over here on the table and try and get you out of the way, but still enough so you can see. All right, let's get this minder unit out of the way here. Raphael is coming out. Pull this sticky card out. Move you over here. Out of the way for now. So, let's see which is the best way we're gonna orient Raphael here. Not gonna lie, I kinda like it towards the back a little bit. I can maybe offset it. But enough playing around. We kind of we kind of know what size we what size hole we got to make. So It's the soil probe for the P&L grow systems. We'll just move that over here. I hope you guys didn't think I was actually going to dig the whole hole with this thing. It's just to get it started and make a nice round hole. See? There you 
go. That ought to do it. It's about the right depth and whatnot. So, take some of our Mikey Rises. literally just take a quarter teaspoon and just kind of sprinkle it in there uh, so I always like to save a little bit and stick it directly on the plant when I put the plan in as well. So, raft should be ready to come out here. As you can see, Raft's definitely got some roots showing, so it was certainly time to uh, to come out of there. So I'll take the little bit that I have left, get it directly on some of these roots here, and then. In we go. Now, I purposely made that a little bit deeper so I can build up around and get this girl to stand straight up. There you have it guys. She's in deep enough now to where she should have no problem standing up on her own. And then clean up first. Give her a little drink. So when I just dug that soil up, it was actually pretty dry right there in the middle. So I'm actually going to go back after this video is over, and I think I'm going to turn up all of the blue mats. That's going to be a little hard to do on video, but basically you go around, and I'm going to have to readjust each one of those little dials right there and get it to drip out some more water because right there in the center that was a little too dry for my liking especially with all of them being right around it so definitely gonna adjust that for a little more output come later on but there's our girl and yeah sorry about the shaky ass zoom Apparently I don't know how to work electronics.
but we're gonna this card's pretty dirty we're gonna we're gonna change this card out for a new one and that's gonna be that guys I don't know if we really uh, need this anymore but why not right So, as you can see, we got a, a fresh yellow card in the back there for picking up any ground pests. Uh, I went and turned up the blue mat drippers. This one in the back is like going ham off of just a couple clicks. Same one, I can't really see that one. But the, uh, the blue mat drippers are dripping more. I went and turned all of them up. But yeah, that one in the back is going pretty hard. Must have needed a lot of water back there. But uh, as you can see, the uh, planet the Raphael, and she should pick herself up, up nice and straight within a day or two. I have uh, no doubts that's going to happen. But we're not going to be doing any training just yet. Although, um, she is big enough to get trained, uh, we are not gonna, we're not gonna be doing any training just yet. I want her to grow a little bit bigger, just so, um, I can maybe get some clones off of her. Um, but we'll see what happens. I might just pull the top and then get some clones off the branching later on. Because, like I said, we're gonna be doing a lot of training to this girl in the near future. But, until then... That's what we're looking at, guys. Alright, guys. So, there you have it. Oscar's here. He's hanging out. He's cuddling. I told you. There's a storm outside. He don't like storms. So, we're going to smoke some bongage. Uh, we're going to hang out with my little buddy. Um, you guys saw it. The Raphael is transplanted now. Um, pretty sure. I think I have my pest problem under control. And as always, guys, every Thursday on the Embracing Organics channel, you guys can hit me up there, hang out with me and my friends, and um, or my Instagram, you know, if you want to talk to me there as well. But peace out, one love, growers love, catch y'all on the fucking next one. And be a little more organic, motherfuckers. Be organic. Be organic. Be, be organic. Be organic. Be, be organic. Be organic.